Hey guys, welcome back to another Comic Book Minute. And my God, do I hope you have one today. Now picture this, the year is 1991. A young Robbie Liefeld decides to pitch the idea to revive the Teen Titans with a young, very popular Marv Wolfman who had just been on the hot run with George Perez doing the Teen Titans previously. Well, managing editor Dick Giordano refused his proposal. This, coupled with his growing frustration with the royalties received at Marvel, Rob Mottfeld decides to meld his ideas brought to the table to Dick and his ideas that he had been brewing since 1987 and meld them to what would become Youngblood. Youngblood would act as Rob's true independent breakout. Hell, even at the time of its release, it became the highest selling independent comic book of all time. A record that wouldn't stand very long, but still an amazing feat when you consider he was competing against the big two. This feat alone would usher in a new era of comics and change the face of the industry forever, creating a more creator rights friendly atmosphere for comics. So in light of Image Comics' 30th year in existence, why don't we look at where it all began? And this one's kind of interesting. It's a double-sided book with a home team and an away team section. We're gonna look at both and let's dive right in. Youngblood would be the first image comic published under Rob's studio imprint, Extreme Studios, on April 10th, 1992. This cover just grabs you. It's bold and it states Rob Liefeld's intentions to stand up to the big two with his fierce new vision to shepherd in his new universe into market. Let's start with his Youngblood home team. As shown here, they act as the domestic formation of the team. The book was plotted, penciled, created, and inked by Rob Liefeld with writing by Hank Canals. However, this would end immediately following this issue due to poor reception of the plot written by Hank. Our story begins with the home team in Washington as a young man and his girlfriend are walking in the mall. A thief grabs a handbag from someone nearby and the man, whose name is Jeff, runs after him. He tackles the man who is about to shoot by an assassin to a nearby rooftop, but when someone shouts a warning, Jeff grabs a pen from his pocket, throws it at the assassin, and hits him in the neck. Checking the assassin, Jeff can find no ID. However, he gets a call from HQ and he has to run off. Here, we're in Baltimore, where we look at Bad Rock, whom, can I just say as a side note, happens to be one of my favorite characters. Hell, I even got a personal sketch from Rob Liefeld signed by him. Just, just a personal side. We see Bad Rock having breakfast with his mother. He gets a call from HQ, he has to leave as well. His mother wishes him well, and off he goes. At his apartment in Arlington, we see Chapel gets a call from HQ. He tells the woman he's in bed, who he just casually gets up with, to, uh, you know, leave her a number, puts his costume on and leaves. And man, this shit looks demonic as hell. This is some serious Liefeld uh, futuristic predictions here because this is the kind of stuff we'll see from not only him but artists like Jay Lee really, really, really jump on going on in the next couple of years at Image Comics. In Washington, we see Vogue patrolling the city. She received a message just like the others, but she decides to not respond. At HQ, Shaft arrives and tells off Photon and Phobe for being late. Before he can say anything else, the team gets a call from assistance. Two members of a super crime group known as The Four were arrested, and the remaining two are now breaking them out. Lastly, we see on a street in Washington, Strong Arm and Gage free Deadlock and Starbright. However, Youngblood arrives. Die Hard ambushes Strong Arm. And well, this splash page shows the rest of the team charges in after the villains. And damn that splash page in those great colors by color design Brian Murray. Man, just an absolute favorite. Let's move on. Moving into our away team story, whom by the way act as sort of the international formation of Youngblood, we see a newsreader tells the story that a terrorist group called the Holy Unification, led by a man named Hassan Kusan, has taken control of the Israeli-occupied territories for four months. 
The President of the United States has vowed to send in forces but remains silent on whether they will be superhuman or not. A reporter on the scene has no news, but he is led away by government agents as the Youngblood away team jump out of a plane. Combat, a member of Youngblood, admits that there are more forces than they were told in the briefing, but he doesn't care. Sentinel points out that he wasn't paying attention in the briefing. After the group makes short work of their foes, they try to break into a small building. However, it's protected by an energy field and the team is incapacitated by advanced technology, except for Sci-Fire, who sneaks into the building and kills Kusan with his psychic powers. When the rest of the team finds this out, they are annoyed and angered. Sentinel sends them back to the jet and calls the cleanup crew. The next day, the newspaper proclaims that Kusan kills himself. That concludes our look at Youngblood issue number one. Rob Liefeld was the first out the gate man to strike with Youngblood number one, and when he did, it hit like a 10 ton hammer. It sounded the horn and sent the troops to the front line. First appearing in 1987's Ram number one from Megaton Comics, this team went on and he continued that spirit. In retrospect, man, Youngblood was exactly the comic that should have launched Image. Fans got a team book with super sexy 90s style characters. These creators were young, hungry, and their marketing was top notch. And at the time, it felt that the comic book world was turned on its head. Well, because it was. Youngblood had a certain moxie at the beginning that helped feed this beast. And it surely isn't Rob Liefeld's best work. However, it will be forever cemented in industry lore and has a flagship book of Image Comics. I mean, Image Comics would go on to remain the third largest comic book company and the single largest independent publisher of all time. And it all starts here. A kid with an idea and a gamble on himself. So with this, without question, it makes it my pick. And folks, you already know. It's been a comic book minute. Like, share, and comment, and subscribe, folks. And as usual, we'll see you on the next one.